As you may have seen on my channel, I have this icon generate AI application, which allows users to kind of buy credits. And the reason I'm using a credit based system is because I'm integrating with third party AI services, which charge you based on tokens used or credits used. And I wanted to walk you through in this video, how do you set up a credit system using Stripe? I'm just going to walk you through the code. I'm not going to do any live coding in this video. So the reason I want to tell you about this now is I just started a new side project called the YT chapters generator.com. Um, which you can go to if you want to check out. It's still kind of like an alpha beta. It's been I spent a couple of days trying to work this out. But as a user, the idea is that you can go into this system and you can buy credits and you can use those credits after you buy them. So if I click on this, this will take me to Stripe. I can enter my information. And then once I buy the credits, that redirects you in and updates your user information to give you 50 credits or 100 credits or 250 credits. And that'll reflect up here. So I want to walk you through that whole process of how that works. And then I also just want to demo this real quick for anyone who's interested. So basically the idea of the side project is you can take any YouTube video. That's not too long. Uh, for example, let's just take this one that I've done, the centralized logger one. And let's see if we can get some timestamps to automatically generate for us. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab this, paste it in here. And what this is doing, this is integrating with OpenAI and also a, using a library to kind of download the transcripts. And it takes all the transcripts, it passes those transcripts to OpenAI, and it asks OpenAI to, hey, generate some chapter timestamps for us. So as you can see here, we have some timestamps. I can go ahead and copy this. Um, I can go straight to the video here, and I can go to edit video. Go ahead and paste that in, and now I got timestamps for my video. All right, let's go to the buy credits page, and I'm going to walk you through the code that's associated uh, with this page. So basically, this page, if I go to source app, and go to pricing, we have a pricing card. And that pricing card is going to invoke an action that creates a Stripe checkout. Okay, so there's a button here which kind of displays how much the package is. So buy for cost. That's this button here. When you click this button, what this is doing is this is actually talking to a server action, which is going to basically bring in the Stripe library here. Um, I do have some hard coded price IDs. So, like, I had to go into Stripe and create three products. One for the 50 tokens, 100 tokens, and 250 tokens. And I have those set as environment variables. So when I deploy this service, I have those set inside of my SST configuration um, right here so that my deployed application has access to the correct IDs. But anyway, we check the number of credits the user is trying to send in, and then we kind of look it up in this map. And then if we find the price ID successfully, what we're going to do is uh, move on to the Stripe checkout sessions create. So this is basically telling Stripe to set up a session. You can also attach some metadata to this, which is what I'm doing. And I'm attaching the user's ID to the metadata and also the, the number of credits that they're buying. Now, the reason this is important is because down the line, when I get that webhook event from Stripe saying that everything was successfully purchased, I can look at the metadata and see who actually bought those credits and then I can add those credits to the user model. Now down here, I also have the line item that kind of specifies what they're trying to buy. So that's at one of those three price IDs. And then if they're successfully buying this, they'll redirect to the dashboard. And then if not, we'll just go back to the pricing page. So that's the first step of the process. Now, if you were to click on this, this takes you to Stripe. All right, I went ahead and just fill this out. And what this allows you to do is if I click pay, now remember here, this is a like a mock card. This allows you to kind of integrate with your test mode Stripe. As you can see up here, we're in test mode. So how this is working in the .env file is I have a couple of locally set up um, environment variables, such as a Stripe secret key here, so that it knows what Stripe account it needs to kind of create the session and the checkout for. So I'm going to show you the Stripe webhook dashboard. This is basically where you add an endpoint to tell Stripe where it needs to send a webhook to when a user successfully buys your package here. Okay, so I'm saying go to YouTube chapter generator um, dot com slash API slash Stripe. And that's actually a next API. So if I go to app API Stripe route, you'll see that we have all this code set up to basically handle that event that's going to come in from Stripe. Um, let's, let's just kind of continue on. I'm going to go ahead and just click this. I'll click pay. Um, but you'll notice this should work perfectly fine. Again, this is test mode. 
Um, so that's going to redirect me to the dashboard. You see my credits incremented. I believe this was like 70 something before. Now I'm at 223. Um, there's a lot going on here. Um, the second thing that happens is there is a locally running Stripe service on my laptop where basically the Stripe service is going to ping your laptop and say, hey, a new event came in and that forwards the event to your locally running API. In production, you don't actually have this service running. It'll just hit your um, the endpoint that you have specified here directly. But locally, I have a running Stripe service, which I go to my package lock. You'll see I have a script that says Stripe listen forward to, and then that endpoint. Okay, so once we've gotten the webhook event, it's going to invoke this post request endpoint. And there's a couple things you have to do. Um, you have to basically take the body that was sent to you and you have to get a Stripe signature from the header. Then you have to pass those to a Stripe library to basically get the event that was sent over. And Stripe will give you a webhook secret and that's used for kind of verifying the signature here to make sure that, hey, the person who hit this endpoint, were they actually from Stripe? Um, because again, it's a public API, anyone can hit this. So you gotta do a little bit of authentication here, make sure it's good. Uh, if not, you just throw an error and say, hey, something went wrong here. Then, since we have the event, we can just go ahead and look at the type and we wanna check if this is a checkout session completed, what we need to do is we get the completed event. And remember before when we were setting up the action here, we put some metadata. Well, here is where we get access to that metadata. I'm saying completed event metadata user ID, and then also how many credits they bought. So going down here, I have a Prisma user update call, which is basically finding the user by that ID, and I just increment their credits by that amount here. And then at that point, the user is gonna get their credits incremented. Now, let me show you the Prisma model. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I have a model user here, and I went ahead and just attached a credits property here, which is an integer, and I default everyone who signs up for my application to have five credits by default. But as you can see, the increment is just basically just incrementing this by one. Uh, I'm sorry, by like uh, 50 or whatever, how much, however much they bought. And that's kind of how the credit system works um, with the applications I've been building in Stripe uh, when you're dealing with like AI and various other things that are like credit based. All right, and the last thing I wanna show you is when you actually buy something, right? When a user tries to generate um, these chapters, let's figure out how that works. I have an actions here. And the way this works, this code's a little bit messy, is at some point in that process, when they try to actually generate these icons, so they'll type in a URL, they'll click generate. We go through and I check, here's like the main piece of logic that checks the, hey, does the user have enough icons to actually generate some chapters? Okay, so I basically say update every user that has a specific ID and that their credits are greater than or equal to one. And then I'm gonna basically say decrement those credits by one. And what this is doing is saying, hey, if no one happens to update because of this where clause, like that didn't actually catch anybody, then we're just gonna throw an error and the UI is gonna say, hey, you don't have enough credits. That's kind of how that works. Update and decrement the credits if they have enough. Otherwise we just throw an error. And that's how we basically prevent people from just abusing our API and using as many credits as they want even though they haven't bought any. All right, so that is the full circle of how my credit base um, setup is going. Again, this is a private repo, so I don't know if I'm gonna share the code yet, but I mean, I shared all the key parts of how this works, and I suggest trying to figure it out if this is something that you want to implement yourself. If you wanna go check out this side project and leave me a comment and tell me, hey, there's a bug when I do Spanish videos or there's a bug when I do YouTube shorts, you'll get five free credits um, to play around with it, and uh, yeah. But I will say, if you have any extra time to go like, you know, try to break my API, feel free to go here and try it out and then join me Discord and give me some feedback if you want. Other than that, that's it. Have a good day. Happy coding.